Kuala Lumpur, uh, one of Asia's most dynamic cities. When I came to office in uh, 2009, I introduced a slew of reforms. The reality of Malaysian politics is you need money to run politics. Huh? Mr. Najib is also a politician. Situated on a major strategic shipping lane and rich in natural resources, Malaysia is a moderate Muslim country that is often seen as a model for fast-growing emerging economies around the world. But the country's democracy is not maturing as fast as its economy. Since its independence from Great Britain in 1957, Malaysia has been ruled by the same political coalition and the current Prime Minister's family has played a prominent role. In Kuala Lumpur, roads, universities and real estate projects are named after Najib Razak's father, Tun Razak, who was also a Prime Minister. Sebenarnya, saya menganggap Alairaham uh, Tun Razak Ayanda saya sebagai uh, mentor saya uh, dan seorang yang memberi banyak uh, inspirasi pada saya. Mr. Abdul Razak is revered today by a lot of Malaysians as he played a key role in developing the country's economy in the 1970s. The father of Najib has been an iconic figure, especially in developing the economy and the socio-economic status of the majority Malay population. When Najib Razak's father took office, Malaysia had just endured violent ethnic riots that many thought would tear the young country apart. Addressing the tensions, he set up affirmative action policies that reserved public contracts and jobs for Malays at the expense of ethnic Chinese and Indian Malaysians. The system helped raise incomes for Malays, who have rallied behind the party at election time, ensuring it remained in power. Critics say preferential policies also became a font of corruption that plagues the country to this day. Corruption occurs in Malaysia because in this country we have uh, preferential systems when the government uh, is uh, giving up projects and so on. And of course everybody would like to be the preferred ones and therefore they bribe the government officials. Najib Razak took power in 2009 promising to repair the reputation of his United Malays National Organization Party by fighting corruption. He acknowledged that the system of preferences fostered patronage that was problematic and said he would change it. Mr. Najib scrapped some constraints on free speech and opened the door to more foreign investment, but he rapidly backtracked on other major democratic reforms and later said it takes time to introduce major changes. His critics say pragmatism took over. Well, I brought some uh, souvenir cups uh, from when I was working for Mr. Najib. It's typical showing a happy family. <laughs> and this is the so-called uh, One Malaysia slogan, People First uh, Performance Now. It's the main reason why I joined his office in the first place. Unfortunately, the mentality is definitely not, for example, performance now. Politics has to somehow embroil with money because we are practicing patronage politics. Without money, there's no support. It's very simple. Najib Razak declined multiple interview requests. Today, most of the system Mr. Najib said he would fight is still in place. Monday, I call, prepare the check. 
Malaysian residents say it is common to see politicians offering financial incentives in return for votes. In this video, Prime Minister Najib is seen promising to deliver a 3 million Malaysian ringgit cheque for a government plan to help a flood-affected village just before a 2010 by-election for local candidates. I'm told you need about 3 million. I want to make a deal with you. You help me, I help you. An election commission member later said Mr Najib wasn't buying votes because not all in the audience were voters. A Malaysian anti-corruption commission official said at the time it would investigate complaints of inappropriate spending, according to local media. The agency didn't respond to questions whether it had done so. The opposition later won the by-election, but UMNO remained in power nationally. Najib Razak denied any attempt at vote buying, according to local media saying any programmes in question had already been planned by the government long before the polls. We honour our commitment. A local parliamentarian now says the money was never given. Najib Razak's career with the UMNO party started immediately after his father's death. He had recently come back from the United Kingdom, where he was sent to study. He didn't show any inclination to be involved in politics when he was in school. But of course, after the father died, it was natural for people to propose that he should be a candidate. I supported him because uh, I believed that he would perform just as well as his father. Mahathir Mohamed was one of the world's longest serving prime ministers. Besides attracting multinational companies to Malaysia in the 1990s and building the world's tallest twin towers, Critics say Mr Mahathir also expanded the system in which the government distributed lucrative contracts to those who supported the party. He denies wrongdoing and says he's worked for the good of the country. Mr Najib progressed in his political career under his wing. But last August, Mr Mahathir even took part in street protests against the current leader after the 1MDB controversy drew worldwide attention. We have to get rid of this leader. Najib Razak's backers say Mr Mahathir is waging a campaign against Mr Najib to reassert his control over the party. Mr Najib denies wrongdoing or taking any money for personal gain. All countries, there is some degree of corruption. But this is blatant. This is open declaration that he needs money, huge sums of money, in order to win the election. A few years after Najib Razak took power, his party's popularity was on the wane. Many voters were tired of the affirmative action programme and widespread complaints of corruption. Street protesters called for fair elections and democratic reforms. Before elections in 2013, many experts thought Mr Najib's party could lose power for the first time. The city of Pekan, 300 kilometers from Kuala Lumpur, is the Prime Minister's hometown and his long-time constituency as a parliamentarian. As in other parts of Malaysia, Najib Razak needed help from his most faithful voters to stay in power. Two months before the election in 2013, Mohammed and hundreds of other village heads received a letter from the Prime Minister's office. They were all given free trips to Mecca, the holiest city of Islam. Flying to Mecca a few months later was for him a once-in-a-lifetime experience. PM Datuk Seri Najib sendiri cakap ni alhamdulillah saya juga bersyukur sebenarnya. Muhammad says he voted for Mr Najib and he asked all his community members to do so. This religious initiative was launched in 2011 and is still ongoing. Critics note that more community leaders were allocated this opportunity in 2013 before the election than the previous years. The trips to Mecca are sponsored by 1MDB, the government fund created by Naji Brazak. The Prime Minister says such projects show that 1MDB is beneficial to many in Malaysia, and local media reports note that the number of sponsored pilgrimages is being increased year after year. 
Mr Najib said he created 1MDB to stimulate the economy, to drive investment into underdeveloped areas and to help to ease ethnic tensions. Today, the fund faces accusations that billions of dollars are unaccounted for and that it was indirectly used to boost the ruling party during the latest election campaign. 1MDB and Najib Razak have denied wrongdoing and said they would cooperate with all investigations. In 2013, Najib Razak's coalition lost the popular vote, but won enough seats to keep control of parliament and stay in power.